so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze <laughs> neze wa neze pepe rempe <laughs> and this is Nessa Peperepe. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be very different. It's going to be pretty different from what we do on this channel. This channel is like my family channel, vlog channel, relocation channel, personal channel. But I've been meaning to spill some gems to you guys. And I'm like, okay, which of these two channels should I put it on? Should I put it on my main channel, Nezevio, or should I bring it here? In fact, none of the channels fit the profile for this content but i'm like okay let me just choose this one all right so in today's video i'm going to be discussing youtube growth i'm going to be discussing success on youtube i'm going to be discussing the thriving niches <laughs> the niches that are bringing in the bar the kudi <laughs> and i'm also going to be talking about how to position yourself for success in content creation. Now I have a masterclass that is currently running. There is so much more to get from there, but I'm like, okay, let me share some free information. In the spirit of benevolence, I'm going to be spilling a lot of free information to my fellow content creators and my burden and aspiring content creators. So get your pen, get your parts, and let us begin. <music> The truth is that YouTube is a very lucrative career. In fact, content creation in general is a very lucrative sector. It is overlooked, it is undermined, it is untapped. Its potentials have not been recognized yet, but I tell you that it's a very lucrative sector. And I always like to say that content creation is the future. If you're a business, if you're an organization, if you're an establishment, whatever you do and you are not online, you do not have online visibility, you are not ready to do business. So if you look at the trend and the trajectory of where the world is going to now, you see artificial intelligence and all of this stuff taking over, it is online. So online is the new oil and gas and there is so much to derive from it and when i say online business is the new gold i do not just mean youtubing alone there are several sectors of creating and generating income online it has its advantages and its disadvantages of course it's not um i would not see it as a very secure means of long-term livelihood because anything can happen that's the major disadvantage and that is why it's very important that when you are doing digital creation or online business you must be investing because the tides can swing in <laughs> you cannot predict the next one year you cannot predict the the policies of the platform Platforms where you air content. So that's why you always have to diversify and invest. But it comes with plenty of advantages as well, especially if you are doing it well and doing it right. In fact, if you're doing online business well and you're doing it right, exerting yourself and getting maximum results, I tell you the kind of financial freedom that you will attain doing it, <laughs> a lot of bank GMs and oil and gas managers have not even come close to the kind of financial freedom that you can get doing online business or doing digital creation. So if it's something that you're given a thought, if it's something that you have interest in, you are not wrong at all. You are in the right path to think about starting up a career in digital creation. I have always been an advocate of letting passion drive my endeavors because whatever you do with passion being the driver is easier. Getting burnt out is less likely. But I would also like to acknowledge the fact that everybody cannot be driven by passion. People can be driven for so many reasons. Some people can be driven for income. Yeah, just as so many people that work in the bank, that work in nine to five jobs, many of them are not driven by passion, right? They are driven to make a livelihood, to make income. So also applies to digital creation. Everybody cannot be driven by passion, but it is easier if your drive, whether your drive is maybe for visibility or for fame or for money, it is easier when there is that passion attachment to it because when you are driven by passion and that income starts coming, oh my God, the result becomes success plus fulfillment, which is, <laughs> which is the climax. Just imagine doing what you love doing and making a hell of an income out of it. That is what they call human fulfillment. And that is what all of us love, right? The main goal of a typical human being, to find fulfillment and make money. So having said that, or all of that, let us dive right into the cocoa of this video, 
what are the niches on YouTube that would get you smiling to the bank that could possibly give you that eight figure income? What are the niches that people are looking forward to watching? The niches that have a higher propensity to get you to blow up, to get people to watch you and to get income in your pockets. First, travel, the travel niche. But there is a but to the travel content. The travel niche is very much in high demand when the content is the place and not the person. I would explain. For example, you are a vlogger, you are a lifestyle vlogger, and you know, you are putting posts about your life, your children, whatever, and maybe you want to go on a vacation, you travel somewhere for a vacation. That vlog, that travel vlog is not about the place, really. It's about you. You are showcasing your experience. You're showcasing your life. You're showcasing your time, the time you spent at that destination. So the focus is not really on that place, but on you visiting that place. That is not what I'm talking about. And that is not what is really in vogue. People want to see places. People want to sit in the chairs in their living room, sit on their toilet seats, lay down in bed and travel to destinations that they cannot afford, do not have the means or resources to travel to. People want to see new things, meet new people, learn of new cultures, experience wonders from far away places that they might not have the opportunity to visit in their lifetime. They want to travel the world and go on vacations through your lens. They want to know how the Obologo people of Kenya, how they marry each other, how brothers and sisters marry in this culture, how the waterfalls in Sri Lanka looks, and how many people come there yearly, and what kind of food they eat there, and the kind of houses they live in. People are curious in nature. So if you have the passion for that kind of content, and you have the means to do all these travels, of course, that niche is a lot more pricey than you know sitting down in your house and the whole logistics and everything is just within your reach. That niche usually comes with a lot of investing and a lot more effort. But it's a niche that when done and done well, will certainly give you success on YouTube. So travel content is highly in vogue, highly in demand, widely watched, and is not going out of fashion anytime soon. Two, so, storytelling. <laughs> Storytelling! <laughs> the truth is that everyone loves a good story. Everybody likes Abebo. Everybody likes Gbegburu. <laughs> Everybody likes someone that can digest story. Give them Woto Woto gist. <laughs> the storytelling niche is a very powerful niche. It's highly in demand and it's not going out anytime soon. People love to experience an event that they did not experience. And how can you convey that experience to another person, even when that person was not on ground to experience it, is through the art of storytelling. Storytelling is addictive. And that is why when you were little, by 6.30 p.m., when you are playing in the sand, or you are rolling your tire, riding your car in your streets, and you see that it's 6.30 p.m., time for Tales by Moonlight, you start running home. You do not want to miss the story. You do not want to miss an episode. Storytelling is addictive. And if you can catch your audience by the way you tell your stories, if you can get the emotions of your viewers, get them invested, not just in your story, but in the way you tell them, you will do well in that niche. I have put together a very powerful masterclass on content creation and specifically storytelling because it's an art, it's a skill, it can be learned, it can be improved. Some people may sit down and say, what else do I want to learn? What else do I want to know? I just want people to know me, I already know everything. Who told you you know everything? You might feel you know everything until you hear from those that know more than you. So that is why I'm always very open to improving my craft. That is why I'm in school studying social media business and digital marketing because I know that digital marketing and creation is the future and I need to improve myself not just as a YouTuber but as a complete content creator and a digital marketer, a social media guru and that's why I'm investing a lot of money to sharpen my craft and myself and elevate my game. So that masterclass is very, very recommended. Even if it's not my masterclass, if you find someone that knows what he or she is doing and is holding a class that will teach you things that you feel that you know but you do not know, attend that class and improve yourself. So the storytelling niche is one that is capable of yielding bountiful results on social media, 
on YouTube. And when I say storytelling, I do not just mean talking about current happenings, breaking news, no. It could be true crime storytelling. That's part of storytelling. Talking about true crime stories, how the victim started, how the incident happened, how it climaxed, and the end of the story, the results, whether the person got caught or not, that is storytelling. True crime is a part of storytelling and is blossoming on YouTube. It could be fiction, a non-existent story. I see some people taking up this folktale storytelling on YouTube and they're doing absolutely and amazingly well. But remember, before you jump on the storytelling niche, you must know how to tell a story. It's not everybody that knows how to tell a story. Some people will try to tell a story and they'll frustrate you by their narration. They'll bring the end of the story and put it in the middle and bring what happened in the middle and put it in the front and say, okay, I forgot this one. And you know, just gamble and bamboozle you. And before you know it, you are fed up. You just want to click out because you are left more confused than you know how you were before you even came to hear the story. So it's something that should be learned because if you tell good stories, you have your viewers coming back for more because it is addictive. The next niche that is blossoming and will not go out of fashion, in fact, this one, I think is number one that will never go out of fashion, is the how-to niche. Let us not forget, I know we come here and we show our families and our children and our life, but let us not forget that YouTube is a search engine. It is the second largest search engine in the world after Google. So, so many people are coming on YouTube to ask questions. How do I do this? What do I do in this case? What is the solution to this? They have a challenge. They have a concern. They want a way out. They need information. They come to YouTube. Nobody is coming on YouTube to search for a lady called Chineze in Canada and how she combs her daughter's hair in the morning before she goes to daycare. Yes, people that are already falling in love with me might watch that. But people who come to YouTube to source for information might not watch that. So the how-to niche would never die and never go out of vogue. It's very lucrative, but only there are two conditions. If you want to make it big on the how-to niche, there are two conditions that you must not skip. First, you must have the knowledge, the expertise on the how-to that you want to teach. I am a lawyer. I can teach how to do several things pertaining to the law. How to get a divorce, the process of getting a divorce. How to buy a land in Nigeria and register the land and ensure that it's not a fake land. How to do this, how to do that. That is my expertise. And that is very important if you want to go into the how-to niche. The second thing that you must possess in this niche is the skill for teaching. You must have the ability to convey knowledge and information. There are some people that they know it. They have, if you tell them to write about it, they can write about it, they have the knowledge, but they do not have the skill of transmitting information. If they explain something to you, you won't understand. It's a skill. So for you to thrive in the how-to niche, you should have apt knowledge about what you're teaching and you must have the skill of expressing yourself and conveying that information in such a way that when somebody finishes watching you, the person will be so satisfied, the person will want to come back and watch again because you know how to teach. And they can also trust your expertise as a guru in that field. So just imagine you are into, you are a, you are a psychologist or you are a relationship expert, a counselor and all of that, and you are teaching how to identify the right or wrong man, how to, or maybe you are even a, a married woman that have been married for maybe 20, 30 years and people believe that, oh, by your long years in marriage, you have the wisdom to impact on relationship and marriage issues. That is a skill, right? A skill set and expertise that people believe that you have. So you can teach how to identify a narcissist or the wrong spouse, how to heal or deal with a heartbreak. People will always search for these kinds of content. If you're a YouTube expert, you believe that you have grown on YouTube to the level that you can transfer knowledge, you can teach how to grow on YouTube, how to attain 1,000 subscribers in the month, how to do this, how to do that regarding YouTube growth. That is a niche. If you're a self-care, a girly kind of person that believe in women, you know, leveling up and doing all of that, you can teach how to be this. There's some known figures that they teach ladies how to eat, how to keep their hair, how to pose, how to get um, rich guys. There's nothing they don't teach. <laughs> so, 
this field, this niche needs two things, don't forget. It needs your skill, your know-how, your expertise, and it also needs your apt ability to transfer information. If you have these two and you start this how-to niche, don't, don't be perturbed if the growth doesn't come immediately. Everybody struggled at the beginning. There's nobody that just came on YouTube. Well, there are very few people that just came on YouTube and within the next one month, they have become experts and they ha their channels have blown. No, you still take the baby steps, but it's very likely that at the end of the day, you will be successful on YouTube creating content. So to start this niche, you have to identify the areas that you best thrive in. What subjects, what topics can I just call you now and you mount the stage and you can talk for two hours straight without burning out, without running out of what to see, without running out of ideas. That is how you identify whether you have the skill sets in that field. So let's go to the next one. Trending issues stroke entertainment news. Now, this is not just storytelling. Storytelling, as I mentioned, can mean true crime. It can mean stories that happened, you recounting stories or telling stories that happened 20 years ago. You want to talk about Clifford Orgy and that whole episode with him eating human beings. That is storytelling. That is not trending news. That is not entertainment news. These are two different niches. This niche, which I consider also a very lucrative niche that has very low tendencies of burnout because every day there would always be news. As long as human beings live, news cannot go out of fashion. There would always be something that would trend. There would always be something that people are talking about. There would always be something that would make the news. So that is why it's a very lucrative niche. Because at every given point in time, you have something to talk about. The truth is that everybody loves entertainment. A lot of people love entertainment. Even serious people, those are our serious bosses at the office, those very uptight people, they still find one way or the other to entertain themselves. Life is hard. After a long day at work, after a stressful at your place of business, you just need something that you can relax and let your hair down. And when a news breaks, a lot of people are desirous of knowing what happened. They need a one-stop shop that can give them the full account of what happened. Instead of going from here to here, getting pieces of correct and inaccurate information, running Heleta Skeleta, people need somewhere that they can go to and the person will give them the story of that entertainment gist. People are coming to YouTube to search for these kinds of content. Remember I told you that your vlogging content, nobody is coming to search for it. But you see trending issues. When something happens, oh, this actor, something happened to him. Oh, this artist, this has happened. People are coming to YouTube, which is a search engine, to find out what actually happened. So it's a lucrative trend that cannot go out of fashion as long as YouTube exists. And as long as you have a YouTube channel and you focus on a niche that is lucrative and is sought after, a niche that people are pursuing, you don't need to pursue people to watch you, instead people are pursuing you for the information you are giving in that niche. You will never run out of income. You will never run out of resources because you are giving people what they are looking for. Is this niche saturated? Yes, it may be saturated. Anything can be saturated, but I do not believe in saturations. I believe in standing out. I'm always that kind of person that if you tell me, oh, nobody could do it here, oh, ah, don't go there, or nobody else could achieve it, I'll tell you, well, don't believe me, just watch. And I'll go there and I would break it. I'm, I'm a go-getter, you can't stop me. So do not let anybody deceive you with saturation. As long as you know what you're doing, you will still stand out in that saturated niche. So that is the question now. What value are you bringing? What is that different thing that you're going to do to stand out in that saturated niche? Or to make an impact in that niche? You have to think about it. If you just come and start doing what every other person is doing, you might not be noticed. And in social media business, you must think about how you can be noticed. Because visibility is everything. When it comes to content creation, when it comes to social media business, visibility is everything. Because no matter how well crafted your work is, no matter how well thought out and well researched your contents are, if people do not know you, if they're not seeing you, if they're not watching you, no matter the passion you have, at some time you would give up because, you know, the effort is not commensurate to the results. And as a human being, you will certainly get discouraged. So how can you ensure that visibility in this entertainment niche and trending issues niche? I, for one, my strategy was 
coming out with the truth. Now, this entertainment niche has a lot of lies and fallacies that drive traffic. Oh, Mr. Oh, who can I use now? Oh, Genevieve Naji. There's one rumor that Genevieve Naji, something happened to her. Oh my God. You see, they'll look for one dead woman on the internet that's not facing the camera. Put her on the thumbnail. Go to Canva. Import cotton wool. Put in the woman's nose. Put arrow. Genevieve. Sprinkle blood around. And, you know, post it. When people see Genevieve, oh, look at the accident scene. Click video. They will click. But for how long are you going to deceive your audience? When they know that you are not a competent person, you're not an honest person, when they know that they cannot depend on you, all you care about is how to just drive fake traffic, very soon you go cast. And that is why if you look at many of these kind of content creators that do this, you can see this video, 200,000, the next one, 100,000, then the next one, 2K. Why? But if you're consistent with the quality of information that you bring, you will have a similar amount of views because you would amass a group of loyal people that trust you. Trust is key in content creation. So how I chose to stand out in this niche, which is one of the niches I do on YouTube, entertainment, trending issues, and storytelling. Those are the two niches, right? I chose honesty. Even if I lose out on a story because it's not true, I will not come out and tell that story when it's a lie. I chose, another thing I chose to do to stand out is research. It is a very painful process. It is a very difficult process. Research is not easy. <laughs> and that is why to get PhD they had <laughs> because it involves a lot of research. It is draining, it is tasking, it is brain nerve wracking. Someone you don't know about, you go and discover everything about that person, everything. You are watching, you are on Google, you are searching about that person and Google is recommending new stories about that person but you want to get the to the bottom you want to get to the person's childhood and you are going to stories as far back as 15 years and you are jotting you have like 20 tabs open you are watching interviews journal blogs gathering information about that particular subject then you come that is what they call extensive research and that is another way i used to distinguish myself in this niche honesty well researched topics give you a wholesome story you be a fool when you watch that video, you don't need to go another place and give you everything you want to know. The third way I chose to make my mark in this niche is by going straight to the point. I don't waste my viewers' time. They don't have the whole day to be on my channel. Once I introduce my video, it's Nezerville, I jump into the story. I don't start talking about many stories. Oh, if you have seen me, if you love me, do you like my face? Oh yeah, subscribe. It hits my thumb up. Yeah. You can say this one later on when you have already hooked your audience. You go straight to the point into your story. A lot of people in this niche beat around the bush a lot and it irritates the audience. So I chose to distinguish myself by being straight to the point. Then the fourth spice I introduce is by legal lessons, throwing around legal knowledge here and there on my stories. So this is me. There are several things that you can do to also stand out in that niche. You want to add comedy? You want to make it more comic? People love to laugh. Even the most wicked, hard-hearted people in the world still love humor. They still want to laugh. Introducing comedy, there are different ways that you can stand out in whatever niche that you choose to go into. It doesn't have to be me. This is my, this is my style. You can think about things that you can do personally that comes easily to you and infuse it and you will stand out. So the trending issues, stroke entertainment niche, oh my God, beautiful niche. And you know, this niche, it has very minimal investment when it comes to resources. The only investing that you'll be doing is time, the time that it takes you to put together the content. But you know, going up and down, having to pay for location, like those that do travel, you don't have to experience all of that. In the comfort of your bedroom, you sit down, all you need is maybe your wall, one flower and chair, and you have your production set. It's a beautiful niche. And if done well, <laughs> it's very rewarding as well. And the last niche, that is lucrative and can give you that good eight figure income monthly. Well, in Naira, <laughs> good eight income in Naira is the comedy niche. Everybody wants a good laugh. So if you are gifted in making people laugh, if you're funny, if you can tell jokes or act out these jokes, it's also a very beautiful and lucrative niche that a lot of people are cashing out on. You do not want to know what these our Nigerian comedians are going home with monthly. On this same YouTube, these guys are multi-millionaires. All these celebrities, all these big brother Nigerian people that are making noise, they don't even earn quarter 
of what these uh, comedians on YouTube are earning. It's just that these guys are very low-key. <laughs> they don't want government's eye to be on their income. So they're very coded, but those guys are making a killing. So if you have passion for telling jokes or making jests, and you have the gift. Passion is there from gift though. If you can do it, it's a very lucrative niche. You can start with shots, TikTok, Instagram, and then drive traffic from these other platforms to your YouTube channel. In fact, that is, that is how it's supposed to be. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter are supposed to be secondary points. And the audience, the traffic you get from these other sites are what is supposed to drive to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> not people like us <laughs> that we are not giving our hundred on it on instagram and other platforms and we're now driving followers from youtube to go and subscribe to instagram no if you are good with all these shots if you're releasing comic content you would gain fast visibility growth on instagram and tiktok is a lot easier than youtube youtube is like the end product so if you have a gift for comedy it's a very lucrative niche on youtube People want to smile, they want to laugh, they would watch you, they will come back. You will get the views and you will get the revenue. So guys, yes, 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 we have come to the end of today's video. I don't know why I just felt like doing this content. <laughs> Remember that I have a well-packaged five model course masterclass. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much to learn. So if you're interested in my masterclass, don't forget to send an email interested to Neza Masterclass at gmail.com there is so much you're gonna get from that so i just felt like sharing this little piece of knowledge and information for my people for my colleagues okay that are already in the business of content creation and those that are desirous of being creators as well this niche is bump booming in our next video maybe you maybe not i might not do the video let me not promise you <laughs> but depending on what you guys want depending on how you receive this one if you want to see the other leg of this video niches that you should avoid <laughs> niches that are outdated niches that i do not see <laughs> in the future niches that require maximum effort and minimum results non-lucrative niches niches that will bring down your views niches that are not sustainable in the long term niches to avoid in in general <laughs> to cut the matter short if you want to see the second part of this video on this topic let me know in the comment section okay thank you so much guys for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a thumbs up and drop all your comments down in the comment section follow me also on my other channel my gist storytelling channel Nezaville. And stay glued because there is so much more coming your way. All right? It's me, your girl, Barista Neza. Neza Mwa. Neza Peperempe. <laughs> and this is Neza Peperempe. I'll see you guys in my next one. Okay? For now. Bye.